Hello, uh, my name is uh, Dimitrios uh, Kehayas. Uh, don't try my last name, it's all Greek to you. Uh, it's Greek. Um, so I will talk to you about uh, speeding up uh, Perl test suites. It's, uh, it's my first ever Perl talk. So I prepared a pretty packed 20 minute presentation. So marvel as I try to deliver it in the 15 minutes I found out I only have. Um, so, but I will upload the slides afterwards so you can uh, use them as a reference. I will cover a lot of stuff you already know. Uh, and uh, so the, the few stuff that you, you might have missed, uh, those are the ones to pay attention to. Um, the talk is based on my experience uh, at Spare Room. I've been there in the last two years. It's uh, a, room, a room ra roommate uh, finding platform. It's a household name in the UK, but it's pretty recent here, so you, you probably haven't heard of it. Um, and uh, it's headquartered in, the, in Manchester. That's where our uh, wonderful <coughs> Perl team uh, is. Uh, it started 15 years ago as a CGI style app. We still have some parts of the website that are kind of like that, but uh, everything new is uh, like API driven and modern Perl. Um, so uh, when I started there two years ago, we already have a pretty uh, large test suite and uh, it was uh, quite optimized it, everything was uh, almost everything was in parallel but it still took over 15 minutes to run on a dedicated uh, multi-core server and um, it would run every two hours uh, it would uh, run the test suite on the master and uh, send a slack report if you try to run it on a four core vm box uh, dev box it would take uh, about 30 minutes so nobody did. Uh, you just like sort of uh, estimated which test would fail and uh, run only those, and then you would merge to master, and uh, you had a good chance of breaking everything. So there was a you had to fix it uh, because you were delaying uh, release, and in any case, release had to be timed uh, after uh, a, a test run, which was either every two hours or you just asked Jenkins and had to wait for over 15, 15 uh, minutes. Uh, so we worked uh, with my team and uh, after uh, several months uh, we got into a much better position where we are now. So we have more tests now but um, the suite only takes two to three minutes uh, giving better car coverage than before so it can be run on every commit, on every branch, on uh, every remote branch automatically and stands a re still sends a report on Slack and um, uh, a GitHub update. So now while you're working, you get instant uh, updates, updates and um, uh, feedback from the test suite. You don't have to do anything. Uh, so we found that you catch some things going wrong very early in the dev cycle, uh, which has helped a lot. And uh, you never, you can release at any instant because the test suite has already run or at worst uh, you just have to wait another uh, two minutes for it um, so I, I really uh, like want to um, suggest uh, trying uh, doing uh, continuous testing um, which does require a fast uh, test suite to do properly uh, it helped us uh, a lot in our dev cycle uh, you can uh, send reports, uh, give feedback through Slack, or we have, uh, we're using something on GitHub. You see these uh, nice green tick marks on our branches and uh, on uh, uh, pull requests. Um, some other notes. We have a full test suite and uh, a faster one, uh, which removes some slow and not prone to breaking tests. And we run on branches, you run the fast one, on uh, master, you run the, the slow one. And uh, Yaf has something to help you with that. So our full suite is 30% slower. Um, we like to keep statistics of every run. So we have, for example, a bot that uh, sends us a report if it detects that there's a flaky test uh, by comparing different branches. Um, Going on to how to actually speed up your test suite, you, most of you already know that parallelizing is the, the number one uh, thing you have to do because it just allows you to throw hardware to the problem and um, uh, make your 
suite uh, faster that way. Um, sometimes we forget to parallelize uh, setup tasks. Uh, so things are like uh, fetches, remote fetches, or uh, in our case, we have uh, some part of our website that uses uh, template, uh, Xlate templates. So compilation was very slow. We uh, use the many core engine to parallelize that. It's four times faster, so it takes no time now. Um, and then you move on to running the actual tests in parallel with the dash J, prove or yeah. Um, you play a bit with the optional number of uh, threads. Usually it's your CPU cores or maybe a bit less. And um, you always run your slow tests first uh, because you want the fast tests to, to cover uh, the end of the, the tail of the test so that the tail is also uh, using many threads, not just one single long running uh, uh, thread. And uh, again, Yath uh, to the rescue for this. In the end, uh, you have to rethink some tests and rewrite them if they're not parallelizable as they are, or have uh, conflicting tests not run in parallel with each other. Um, now, temporary DBs are uh, a slow solution for parallelizing tests that uh, require competing uh, DB uh, changes. It's last resort, you shouldn't uh, use it. If you have to use it, try to find the minimum schema and data you need. And if you need to um, populate a table, don't do select insert. There's uh, something called transportable table spaces, for example, for MySQL. Uh, I don't know, for other databases. Um, you can avoid it altogether by using temporarily tables instead. Most databases uh, support that. And uh, otherwise, just have the competing uh, tests to not run parallel to each other. Um, again, Yath to the rescue for that, if you were at the previous talk. And, uh, or you can use an aggregator, we'll, we'll see about that. Um, now, you profile your uh, app, probably. Uh, it's a good idea to also profile your tests because you use your app differently or you have some extra code in there and you can just profile directly your slow tests, uh, but um, it makes sense to profile uh, fast tests together in bunches to uh, find patterns that are worth optimizing for. You're not supposed to optimize uh, uh, like a single slow uh, fast test. Sometimes you can even find things like uh, dependencies you didn't know were there and you don't need and they have like some startup time and you can uh, find uh, where they are and uh, get rid of them. Um, so about the DB server, uh, it's a slow part of the, of the system, so make sure it's at least on a local network, uh, so you reduce the I.O. Uh, lag. It, it can be even on the same machine, depending on your configuration, what servers you have uh, available. Uh, it uh, try to optimize the configuration of your uh, DB server, in our case, uh, uh, it took 15% uh, off our uh, uh, test suite time. So I'm listing here just uh, the settings that uh, made the biggest impact for us. For memory constrained systems, you'd want to optimize for uh, memory, not speed, which then gives you the, the speed. And uh, we clean up our uh, test DB every release, so there's no uh, garbage slowing it down there. Now, um, interesting thing, try to get the connection, the concurrent connections when you're running tests uh, because you can uh, find out interesting things like you forgot uh, to pass on the same uh, DB handle and it makes uh, like a, a surge in concurrent connections which then uh, slows down your tests and uh, here's some like a, a 10 minute uh, script I did uh, to count hours. Uh, the test will be, the slides will be uploaded later if it's useful to anyone. Um, mocking is an entire topic upon itself, so I won't touch much on, that, on this. You know that uh, when you want to test a specific part of the, the system uh, or do unit testing, you don't want everything else to run, so you have to mock any dependencies. Um, and even with integration testing, you don't always need everything uh, to run while you're testing. Um, and uh, DB access is the, the most common things that you want to um, 
mock because they slow down. So some example examples of uh, tools we we use uh, for these tasks. Now some general things to avoid. Um, if you have a web app, avoid going through the through a web server. Uh, it's very slow, and you cannot do things that you need when testing, like mocking, uh, accessing uh, database handles. Um, I mean, even if with our oldest, uh, the, I told you we have some CGI style code still in some parts. We don't run it through Apache. Uh, we just simulate the, simulate the configuration and run it directly. If you really have to have to use something like Mechanize, try to use it wisely. Do the minimum number of requests. If you have a, a good init point, initial point, uh, do a clone instead of refetching it later. And um, don't forget, even though it's uh, a testing server, avoid uh, running things that would not run in production, that debugging code that slows you down. And uh, don't test the functionality of a CPAN module. I've seen tests that basically are like s testing the, a third-party module. There are already a test suite uh, for that. And uh, only if you change, upgrade the uh, CPAN module, you have to like, verify it. And in general, be smart about your test data. Don't blindly uh, throw test cases. They have to be actually testing something. Um, Preloading, if you were here uh, during the previous uh, session, you already saw how uh, preloading modules can uh, speed up uh, heavy modules, basically can speed up your test suite uh, significantly. Uh, I couldn't get fork prove, fork prove to work, uh, but Yath-P works great. Um, Yath also has a persistent runner, so you don't even have to load Yath. Uh, some uh, complicated uh, syntax there. No, no, just Yath start. And uh, finally, um, test to aggregate is the first uh, module that uh, Sparum open sourced. Uh, it's the smallest and the simplest one as a pilot. Hopefully, we'll start up and up on sourcing. Uh, Lots of our stuff uh, soon on CPAN. It's um, it simply runs a, a list of tests as subsist sub as sub sub tests of an aggregate test. I um, I use something like that to profile uh, many uh, fast tests together. So run them as sub tests and uh, profile them together. And I saw that it was uh, so much faster to run that I said, okay, immediately there will be a CPAN module for this. So there was, but uh, it was doing some, it was trying to do too much and it was uh, uh, messing with test builder, so it no longer works. So I, I looked into it in case I could get some ideas. I decided I didn't want those ideas. So what if uh, we have something that's very limited in scope, just uh, runs things on the same names namespace? And uh, because we had a bunch of tests uh, that we find with that. They were just separated because of uh, organization. Uh, it made sense to have them separate, but they could run all at the same time. And uh, so the module is very simple. You just give it a directory if you want to, and uh, it runs the tests. Uh, so we found out that over 70% of our tests actually, with some minimal changes, could uh, run under it. Um, it doesn't matter if you use Prove or YAF. Uh, it runs under any. Uh, we don't actually run directories uh, because uh, we just put uh, the, the tests, we mark them in a list. So the aggregator works with list files. So you don't have to move uh, your tests around if your uh, testing uh, script knows to avoid the running them by themselves afterwards. Um, so this is how we use it. and. We got a 90% speed increase. That's almost half the time uh, after everything else was optimized by doing this. So I have an example live demo with uh, the Moose test suite, which I will run in the background as you ask me ask me take uh, questions. So 184 of the Moose suite tests would run um, without modifying them at all. And I removed uh, the four slowest for the dramatic effect to achieve it a bit there. Um, we can, so I will start it. This is it with uh, prove. And I can take questions if you have any. Yes? 
oh, um, I just did it uh, after the, the Yacht talk, so I assumed most people would be aware. So instead of prove, for test two suites, you use YAF. It's the test two harness. It's yet another testing harness. And it has many advantages over uh, Prove, uh, both speed and it knows much more about what uh, is happening in your tests because uh, it doesn't rely on tap output. Uh, so this is a single uh, 39 seconds on a single thread for these 180 tests. If I do YAF with preloading moose, it should be about half time. Yeah, 22 seconds. And um, if I do here, um, so this is what I run the directory. Uh, so you can run it either under prove or yaf, doesn't matter. Three seconds. <laughs> uh, if it was a persistent yaf, uh, uh, it would take two or one. Uh, any other questions? How many threads was that for? So that was a single thread. So all te three tests were single thread. Um, it's more dramatic that way. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So the aggregate runs all the dot T's within one process. Yeah, so you, if you see here, your test number is 180. So one all, file. So, so it, all the modules are pre-compiled, pre-loaded, but no module ever it, it basically uh, reads each one of your files and adds them as a subtest and runs a do on them. Yeah, instead of a system, it's a do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so the, it was 180 files before. Yeah. Yes? Um, earlier you said that this was a subset of correct? Yeah, I tried, uh, I had a script to run, uh, try to add all the moose tests. And it managed to add 184 of them uh, that did not break under the aggregator without touching them. And, and how many tests are there normally? 470, I think. Okay, so this is a, a little less than half. It's less than half, yes. Um, so, yes, it's the, it's the same directory. I, the, I did a PWD at the start to show it's the same directory that they all run. Yes. I, I deleted the extra test, so it's the, the T directory has only 180 tests now. So it's uh, all the same. And uh, it produces on uh, the aggregator, it produces a lot of uh, redefined warnings because Moose uses test more. Uh, so uh, the aggregator calls test uh, 2 v, v0. Uh, they're benign, but uh, you, you'd want to get rid of test more and uh, use test 2. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No? I guess that's it then. Can you explain a little more where the speed exactly comes from? Like it's just because now you don't have to like... You don't load, uh, you don't load any more uh, interpreters. You don't fork. Uh, uh, you don't have to reload anything because any every use that uh, comes after the first one doesn't have to load anything. Yes, they, I mean, there are some tests we don't run them uh, under this because of issues like that. So it's uh, for a subset of your tests. It's usually for unit tests and uh, things like that. Yes? Uh, you, you mentioned at the beginning, you know, you want to parallelize it as much as possible. Like you said, you would know, use the micro J flag for the test harness, but also use MC to kind of pre compile. Oh, so yeah. Uh, with So no, I used MC only for uh, making the X slate uh, compile phase run in parallel. So MC gives you uh, many workers and each one uh, takes a, a file 
and compile a, a template and compiles it, while uh, normally Xslate works in uh, in series. So it's a different thing. Yes. So yes, yes, yes. So that was the pre before running the test phase. Uh, I will upload the slide deck. It, it's meant to be like a reference thing that you look at and get ideas that you have missed, uh, because there are many like uh, blog uh, posts about uh, things like that. So it's good to have uh, some reference. And we had missed many things that uh, other people had uh, found. Uh, thank you very much.